Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to LA Week, Toast LA. We are back with our second episode of the week. It is Wednesday. We are hoping you are having a bright, sunny, beautiful, happy day. We are sweating our asses off here in LA, working extra hard. This is our third podcast of the day. The third podcast podcast of the day. I think we might be all talked out, but we'll see how it goes. We always have something left to say, but yeah. I don't know. Today has been a long one. It has been a long one, but we are chugging along because we are going to be graced by Tanya Rad, who I'm very excited for she's a modern woman host of the scrubbing in podcast host of on air with ryan seacrest she's just like a very well-connected woman and also a toaster and i have so many questions for her like personal professional the toasters have so many questions like it's just gonna be truly q a it's gonna also be just like i feel like it's gonna be a panel of just like modern women yeah modern women like being modern yeah and female modernization right modernity it's the modernity of tanya rad i wish today's episode was brought to you by modern fertility because i wish we don't have a read for them this week but that would have been really great that would have been really great but you know what else has been really great our past 24 hours since we sat here on this show have been a whirlwind and i feel as though we need to recover the toasters just so that for ourselves we can digest like today was insane but last night was even crazier after we wrapped yesterday's episode we went straight to dancing with the stars they told us to get there at 345 because they start at five o'clock we got there at 455 and i was 100% certain they weren't going to let us in because the email was very threatening like arrive on time right but they let us in because you know they had to and um, we looked so the part because the invitation said look glamorous and so we changed into our like feather boas it's an old Hollywood show I wore a sparkly blouse and it was incredible you probably saw us on TV as Lauren's friends and family maybe you're watching today because you saw us on TV and you're like who are those girls Lauren's friends like they were so cool and skinny and beautiful we sat right behind Chrissy Brinkley who is just an absolute Treasure. Model, which, yeah, she is. Um, and also, who else was there? Karamo's friends and family were right around us. They were really sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, Lindsay L., the country star, was a part of Lauren's friends and family, too. It was really, oh, Kevin from The Office was there because Kate Flannery was on The Office. I saw on page six today that the people who play James Vanderbeek's parents on Dawson's Creek were there. Also, the new stars of the new um, High, High School, School Musical, Musical the series. series. It, they were there too. It was really just like cool. Aaron Andrews, obviously. Yeah. Um, we saw Carrie Ann Imaba. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Carrie Ann Imaba. Carrie Ann Imaba fell off her chair. And the it was Snatcher got that's a mic. When I, oh, the Snatcher got a mic today. The Snatcher has her voice back. That's it when was I was hard. really like, holy shit, this is live TV. Because like, I was like, oh, sh- they're going to cut that. Like, we're, we're going to have noticed Did that. Did you think that was real? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was like delayed. No, apparently it's happened before because they use rolling chairs and they have a very small platform. And so um, Todd, what's the host's name? Tom. Tom was like, oh, wait, there's something on the floor. And she got like freaked out. Like, what is it? And oh, she, stood up, she stood up for a second and then went Spooky. to find her chair again. But because she was in a rolly chair, it wasn't there when she sat back down. Understood. And I thought for a second, like, oh, they'll cut that out. But then I realized it's live television. Yeah. Oh, I guess it probably looks cooler on television, much like a lot the show yeah, does the show but it was really razzly and dazzly and but it was it's a lot of work to be an audience member oh my god they will beat the clap <laughs> out of you you have to stand every 10 seconds we had the clap last night right and so you know how in award shows like it's recently gone viral <laughs> You know how in award shows it's recently gone viral um, with celebrities fake clapping? Nicole Kidman. People are like, Nicole Kidman doesn't really clap like that. It's like, no, they make you stand up and clap so much you get tired. So you start to fake clap. I was like this. Because <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get yelled at. And your hands they hurt. They will come around <laughs> with a stick and beat the clap out of you. Yeah, and it's like some of the performers, like the audience members have props. So for Lauren Elena's, we had like little lights. For the High School Musical, and we had um, like little flags. And we had to rehearse the flags. Like we know how to wave a flag, okay? They had us clapping above our heads <laughs> far too early on. <laughs> By the time it started, I was sitting next to Karamo's um, grade school friend's mom. And her and I our arms were killing us <laughs> no and like she was older and like she really she had way more like zealous vibes yeah, at than one I did. point i said to myself i was like i'm not clapping anymore <laughs> and she was like right it was really really painful but it was still really cool to be there it was very glamorous loved being on like the cbs lot it was all really cool it was really cool it was so tv and it's like exactly what you think it was and i think sometimes when you see something in real life it is a letdown but this was so not a letdown it yeah. was so glamorous the dancing was fabulous the stars were fabulous no we went home which was weird yeah but you know what at least like we only had good vibes no i was actually really looking forward to like feeling the awkward vibe in the room like once the show is over <laughs> because once the show is over everyone pretty much stands on the stage and all the the audience members leave but if you're friends and family you can stand and like stand on the dance room floor and like i was like wanting to be there with like whoever was going home you know yes, yeah totally yeah that would have been i guess kind of cool as our resident dancing with the stars stan yeah the snatcher what do you think stands dancing with the snitch what do you think of the experience i thought it was great i mean i it was awesome. Glitz and glam, glamorous. But like, 
it's still better to watch on TV. Like Agreed. the props were so big that you couldn't even see the dancing. That was like that time we went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was awful. Justin Timberlake, like I, he was, his back was towards us the whole time and he wasn't even wearing a microphone. Yeah, but I do have to say it was super impressive, like the way that they were able to like set up the, the dance floor and then like take it down in literally a minute and 30 we seconds. Got a lot with of all questions. of the confetti, with all of the everything. Right, we got a lot of questions about the confetti because pretty much every single person's dance ends in confetti and by the next commercial break, like it's totally cleaned up. And what I noticed was that more often than not, the confetti that they throw is streamers, not little pieces of confetti. So then it makes it a lot easier to pick up the streamers. I, I saw people like, grabbing a bunch of streamers and then literally just pulling like a rope because it gets so much more off the ground. So that was like a little interesting like TV trick that I learned. Yeah, it was and streamy also vibes. something that I noticed that I would never have seen on TV is like the pros are fully telling the stars the next dance yep. move. Like you see them like screaming what the next one is and it's like, hmm. Yeah, interesting. I well, mean, that makes it is sense. hard to remember. Obviously, and like they don't—they're not pros. They don't. And know. as our resident future dancer, like, did you feel more excited? Did, did it make you more nervous? Like, oh, to potentially be on the show? I felt more certain than ever that like that's where I need to be. That that is my life's goal. And I think it—I know it's like I could probably dream like a little bigger, but I think it's a great, honest goal. And it's a great platform too. Also, we have to tell you guys that. When we were walking in, we ran into this guy and we just thought he like worked on the lot, but he ended up being um, Ali Brooks manager. And he was really, he th I guess he heard the podcast because everyone in the world listens to this podcast. And he was like, thank you for trying to serve justice for Ali's scores. Yeah. And last night that we got the justice. Oh my God. She was the she first was person incredible, to get all nines. But it's like, yeah, you heard uh, what we said about justice for Ali Brooke. And then did you catch it next week when we made fun of when her we package? We made fun of her for cy cyberbullying. Yeah. Um, but it's, no, it, it was just a lesson in like everybody like. The morning toast reaches everyone. They might not listen every day, but when it is pertinent to the situation, it will reach them. And it makes you think twice before you speak. But then it also realizes like this platform affords you so many opportunities, including one in which we need today. Because after Dancing with the Stars, we went out to dinner and we went to this Craig's. This so important, you guys. Please listen. We went Please to listen. Craig's, which is PSA. like, we were being thirsty. We were all just up. We're like, we want to go to the most best restaurant. So we went to Craig's. It's Hollywood. And there's always paparazzi outside Craig's. And we, you know, we walked out of the car like, Probably the odds of someone ever taking a picture of us are actually like one in a thousand probably. Um, but you never know. And you just don't want to be caught off guard. So we pull up. There's a million paparazzi outside. We get out of the car looking glamorous. They like, look up. so coy. Yeah, they look up and then look back down. Like they wanted nothing to do with us. We walked in, whatever. I made a very low-key low key dinner. Just really wanted to fuel up. The food at Craig's is so good. Yeah. We saw like a couple celebs. There were some real stars there. So it wasn't even offensive that they didn't want to take yeah, that picture. Yeah, Larry King was right there. I just right thought there. like at best they'd confuse us with someone like think Margot was Emma Chamberlain, who she looks more and more like every single day. Totally. Thank you. So we didn't get paparazzi And then on our way out, um, our car is outside. We walk to the door and all of a sudden I'm – I'm being flashed like it's nobody's motherfucking business. Like flash, flash, flickety, flash, 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 flash. And I didn't even have time to process what was going on till I crack a smile. And I get in the car and we're all just like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> like all three of us, like my shirt was unbuttoned. Margo's hair was in a bun and I don't even know what Jackie was my doing. My gut was out. We, like because we didn't get paparazzi on the way in, we're like, there's no way we're gonna get and paparazzi on the way out. Walked out like separately. Like I walked first, Claudia walked second, Margaret walked third, and they snapped our whole procession. And like honestly, I was smiling. Like I was trying to be so coy. I literally almost put up peace signs <laughs> because I was like, I was so excited, and, and I you, wanted them to know like. Hi. And I've had my picture taken before, and it's usually like one snap, maybe two or three. This was flash, 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 no. flash, 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 flash. Multiple cameras, multiple people, multiple shots. I can understand how someone could get hooked on the fame. Honestly, oh, it was it was the sound is is addictive, invigorating. The, like I was hearing it in my sleep all night. I'm like I, I wanted it back. It's like I was I was high on heroin and I needed to get back there. Yeah, you know? and that's how subs feel. People get addicted to the fame. And I never really understood. Like I've I've gone. I've really thought a lot about how like I've been in cool places and met cool people. And I never really understand how like people really get so carried away and like lo like really lose control with fame. And then after hearing those sounds, I totally understand it. It's <laughs> the paps, man. Yeah. And anyways, what we need you for is we aren't able to find the pictures uh, probably because nobody knew who we were and they probably took our pictures by accident like thinking we were you know probably thought I was rookie lake or something and they um, probably then like threw the memory card in the trash yeah but. but we need those pictures so like if you are we need the TIA on this if you're like a sleuth or if you work in publishing you have access to these sorts of um just look please Data photo bases. databases Jackie was wearing a pink feather top you can't miss her you really couldn't miss me I looked like a fucking round disco ball big sparkly shirt with big sleeves and Margaret was wearing like a sleek black and white jumpsuit with her hair like in a very messy bun um so just please like please help us please look for the photos we have some people on the job and it's not looking good which makes me feel as though we're gonna have to call the paparazzi 
before we leave this yeah. town. Well, what we keep asking people who like live here, we're like, how do we call the paparazzi? I'm addicted. I'm addicted. And you know what? I'm not above calling the paparazzi. No. I'm not even above paying for my own photos. No, Spencer because it's Pratt like, did it and it really launched him and Heidi into like superstardom for a long period of time. Right. And also like influencers pay photographers to do like shoots of them on mm-hmm. the beach, like being cheesy all the time. Like, why can't I pay paparazzi to take pictures of me outside yeah. of a bump in restaurant? Yeah. We're I going to a bump in restaurant tomorrow that is known to have paparazzi outside as well. And if I don't get my picture taken, like, I'm just going to feel so let down because now having known what it's like, I can't ever walk into a restaurant and like not have my picture taken. I'm literally yeah. going to need Ben to be there with like an iPhone. Yeah. No, I agree. We're going to work on it. Um, yeah. Stay tuned. But please keep your eye out if you have these sorts of um, credentials. Yeah. And then today we had a crazy day. We did Nick Vile's podcast this morning. Uh, bright and early. Um, it was really fun. It was really good conversation. Kind of serious. Um, and I thought it was such a productive conversation. I so enjoyed I mean, the genesis of the Toast relationship. Vile relationship knows no bounds. And we were in this this exact room. It was really when fun. When the I conversation really went down. He's so great. And it flew by. It was a really long, interesting It was like an hour and a half. I think it might be the Steens like you've never seen us before. Yeah, it was. We never. People ask us the same stuff. Like, how'd you get started? Like, he was very in-depth and like did obviously did his research and we talked about stuff we never really talked about like our relationship yeah. how we balance it all how yeah. we keep things fresh yeah i thought it was cool i thought it was cool too i had a really nice time and then we also did the lady gang which was very exciting we filled in for becca tobin so i was sad she wasn't there but i do think if it was five people like we're all so chatty like it would have been insane so have gotten we word. missed her but it was better and it was actually just so interesting we got to do it on the entertainment tonight lot because that's where kelty's office is and she's like the sick office and i was just like really impressed with her whole like business their you know whole, their whole situation is situated is aspirational uh-huh mm-hmm. And I had a great time. It was on a their hilarious well. episode. It was hilarious. It's so toasty. So like I believe that's next week, right? Next Tuesday. Yes. We'll yeah. let you know when everything's coming out. Yeah. That'll be exciting for like the toasters who are also lady gangers and the lady gangers who are also toasters. And then maybe the lady gangers who hate us. Yeah. And maybe like we'll hate us more or yeah. hate us less. Maybe we'll convert some lady haters. It's exciting. Yeah. It was good stuff. And now we're here. We're going to break down the Fast Five. We're going to talk to Tanya Rad, And then I'm going to take the biggest nap of my life. Because <laughs> LA is like, I'm never here. So when I am, it's like you have to do absolutely everything. You have to do everything. This has been like the biggest day for us. Snitch and I also went to Jones on 3rd because oh, yeah. I thought You've been that's... talking about it like going for hours. I just like, I know that's where some stars get spotted. It's like a, it's a lunch place. It's, it's kind of casual. It's nothing too crazy. It's not like the Beverly Hills Hotel. And it was not what I thought it was. It's literally like kitchen cabaret and gray neck and um no, exactly yeah it's, and like, it's one of those places you have to order and then sit down which n- i hate not I hate. glamorous whatsoever we forgot to order our salads chopped overall had a pleasant experience but we went really out of our way to go there and it was unnecessary and you wouldn't recommend to a friend no i would if you work in the area yeah but it's not like a staple of la like to so go out of your way i went to last night was my first night time at craig's it's a staple. It's a staple. First of all, the food is so fucking good. It's always a scene. It's always popping. And it's like, everyone talks about Craig. So when you get there, you expect it to be like a palace. You know, it's just like a steakhouse that's so good. That, like we were in and out in 30 minutes. Like the service, like I couldn't lift a finger without someone putting a clean napkin underneath it. And then the best part is that we were with my friend who ordered uh, pigs in a blanket. But then we were like, oh no, we can't eat pigs in a blanket. They're not kosher. And the waiter told us the hot dogs were kosher. So they were they phenomenal. Were, they were phenomenal. Everyone was in tune with what's necessary. And that's just what we like to see here out in L.A. So true. Well, I think without further ado, it is time to deliver the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. And it is for sure. But I think everyone needs to keep in mind that like we're in L.A. spending every dollar that we own just like trying to put on a production. And you know, we got to make some coin. So today's episode is brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, Case Divide. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Toast L.A. So the problem with having a phone and needing a phone case is like you don't want to drop it and break it, but you don't want to get like a big, ugly, like screen protector, like a big, ugly phone that like makes your phone weigh a thousand pounds and you're going to get carpal tunnel. And it's like I thought there was no way to have like a Q phone that also won't break. But that's not true because Case Divide is here to save the, save the day. Their cases have a two layer cheat tech material construction and they have passed a drop test from a height of six and a half feet. They offer military grade phone protection. But the best part is that they have thousands of designs to choose from. So you'll find the perfect case for your aesthetic. We both got cases. They did a collab with Lisa Frank, which is just so on brand and like Lisa Frank is everything and the phone cases are so cute and they do tons of cool collabs they have tons of you could personalize a phone case like it's actually also a great gift they're great phone cases like you get your initials on them they're so like tailored to you I can't recommend highly enough. They've done a St. Laurent collab. They've done a Pokemon collab, a Sarah Jessica Parker collab, a Wonder Woman collab, a Rolling Stones collab. You're able to choose your favorite designs, colors, and add custom text to create a custom phone case that no one else will have. We can't imagine going one day without without our phones. Like, if, if my phone cracks, like... 
my heart Game cracks. over. Yeah, it's like when my phone dies, I die. It's like Nintendo. They wah, let you have wah. the best of both worlds with military grade drop protection and a stylish phone case you'll actually want to show off. There's no need for bulky phone cases that turn your phone into an ugly brick. Case to buy cases are sleek and chic as, as your actual phone. They have thousands of designs for you to choose from. And if celebrities like Kylie Jenner and Gigi Hadid are obsessed, you know this is a phone case that you can show off on your Instagram feed. 100%. Go to casetify.com slash toast today to get 20% off your new favorite phone case. That's casetify.com, C-A-S-E-T-I-F-Y, dot com slash toast for 20% off your phone purchase today from casetify.com slash toast. I love my casetify case. Yeah, you do. I really do. All right, let's jump in. Let's jump right in because we have a bit of legal news to tackle today. Okay. Uh, some good, some justice being served Uh, Actually, I guess in all cases, justice is being served because Felicity Huffman is reporting to prison to begin her 14-day sentence, which is a reminder to to me that it is October, which keeps shocking me. It's not even just October. It's halfway through October. When Gary Giannetti said his book comes out October 22nd, and I was like, like, oh, in a a month. And then I was like, why are you coming to New York next week? Also, can we talk about Brad and Gary for two seconds? Oh, yeah. We got such positive feedback from them, and it's like... Everyone knows Brad and then everyone knows Gary's like digital personality. But Brad, I mean, Gary was telling us he doesn't really do like podcasts a lot. Like Gary's always on TV. He does the E! News red carpet. And I'm really glad that like the toasters got to see like Gary behind Gary because they were so cool, so fun. They have like such a good relationship. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed talking to them. I really enjoyed talking to them. They were like great people, great guests. So interesting. And I think they had fun. I think they had fun too. Okay. I personally just like enjoyed listening to them. Yeah, you it, know? Was, it was a really good episode. I felt really proud of it. Same. Well, Felicity Back Huffman. Back to Felicity Huffman. Yeah. Because TV <laughs> actress Felicity Huffman is reported to prison Tuesday to begin serving a 14-day sentence for her role in the National College admissions bribery scandal. Quote, Felicity Huffman reported today for sentencing to Federal Correction Institution in Dublin, California, a representative for the actress said in a statement. Ms. Huff- Huffman uh, is prepared to serve the term of imprisonment ordered as one part of the punishment that the judge imposed on Ms. Huffman's actions. Um, yeah, so she's going to prison for 14 days. She's going to a prison that's being referred to as club fed. It's like they have um, like yoga, sunbathing. Yeah. It's not going to be like a tough 14 days for her. I feel like she might want to stay even longer. You know, I'm sure being married to William H. Macy, you know, it's a lot. Yeah. And like the rumors out there, you know, just even the way like this whole thing's going down. Yeah. Like something, how she's the only one who got indicted. It's kind of shady. Something ain't right. Yeah. Like at least like Massimo and Lori are in it together. Yeah. Like their their they marriage will, has never been They better. will sink or they will swim yeah. together. Um, I just think this is so crazy and honestly she must be so relieved that the whole saga is coming to an end because it's been months of like her name being dragged through the press her kids being like bullied on social media and everyone just like really hating on her you know for obvious reasons so I'm sure like she's obviously not looking forward to prison but she's probably really looking forward to putting this all behind her yeah and 14 days like not so crazy in a, in a prison like that well for Lori it's so different because her um her crime was committed in uh Boston right Boston no they her? went to USC I know, but she keeps going to... Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, no, it's in Boston. She's Margo's right. The whole case is in Boston. Well, Laura, was Felicity tried in... I don't know, but the case, Operation Varsity Blues, like, was set forth in Boston. So how did... Why is Felicity going to jail in California? Like California. I don't understand. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's different. Maybe because they didn't go to, like, grand jury or whatever. Maybe. I have no idea. Oh, yeah. Right, because Felicity pled guilty and just, like, took her punishment... But um, Lori pled not guilty, so it's being dragged out to a whole trial. Yeah. Which, if she does lose, I think will make her sentencing worse. Of course. Because they hate they hate to waste, the, waste like, the civil servant's of time. Course. But this is actually, like, a swift carriage of justice. Like, this happened less than a year ago. It was February, March when all this Very came out. Very fast. Well, and she has four- the right to a speedy trial. And right. they're cooperating. And like- in 14 days, this will, well, plus her, the, her fines, and I think she has some uh, community service to do, but this will all be behind her. Yeah. And she can get back to work, you know, right? Once you do... the do your time. If anyone wants to work with her, that's the other hill she'll have to climb. I don't think it will be because she's still in shows right now that she had filmed earlier. Like she's, she's not irrelevant. And by the time, 14 days from now, like clean slate, no? Yeah. I don't know. I don't make the calls. You don't make the rules. I mean, I've been in this town a few days now. I'm getting pretty close, but I still don't make the calls here in this industry. Okay, well, I look forward to seeing Felicity Huffman in 14 days. Yeah, me too. Like, maybe she'll get a tan. I know they have, like, a sunbathing station at this prison. Um, She's in great shape already, so maybe it'll be just good for her mind, body, soul, spirit. You know, the whole thing. Yeah, and, I mean, like, the weight of this, she's going to lose drop weight like that. No, but it's really, like, the... Like when you have something on your mind for so long and it's like taking over your life, whether it's like a life event or something that you're just really not looking forward to, like when it's over, she, she's going to make the biggest duty of her life. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Like I I feel like duties are a really good um, metaphor for like things in your life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like poison. Yeah. Getting you know, it out. Being released from and the it's body. It's painful, but it's good to get it out. 
It is. Well, in a little more legal news that I did feel the need to speak on because we, uh, you know, relate personally to the matter. Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. has been handcuffed for arraignment and now faces 14 accusers. When homegirl, the girl who started all this, who is a hero, and I don't know her name and I apologize. I believe she is a Jane Doe. Oh, really? I believe. When she uh, called the police, she opened the floodgates, like in the best possible way. So I think there was a lot of skepticism in the very beginning because it was one girl speaking out and there was a video that was really blurry and like people are always so quick to like doubt women. But now it's like you can't deny I mean I could never deny having literally had it happen to me right um everyone knows and when I was 16 in a club like Cuba Gooding Jr. like walked right by me and put his finger up my butt and I was like so shook by it um so this is not shocking at all but good on everyone for coming forward 100% I mean I know that he got a range or whatever because my phone always blows up with um google alerts whenever he's in the news now my name is like attached to him which is like like awful like that's what I'm known for that's not what you're known for. And you have played a part in helping people come forward for sure. Well, I just, I think this is so great. L- I think this is so great. I want justice to be served. And anyone who is still like on the fence on this matter, which I would never even think is fathomable, except for when your name was in the news with this, I saw that people like didn't believe you or thought you wanted money or something, which was insane. No, I got a number one podcast. Also, I don't need the money things. If you like wanted to go out there and like get someone's money, like Cuba Gooding Jr. No, I know. A little random. Snow Dogs wasn't that big of a film. <laughs> That I think like I would probably like target someone a little wealthier. No, 100%. Maybe like a Murdoch or something, you know? Ooh, yeah. Anyways, I hope he I hope justice is served. This always happens though with celebrities. Like we get really far like with Kevin Spacey. Like we even went to trial and justice still wasn't served. And some could argue that the court of public opinion is even more like- Damning. But you know, the court of public opinion hasn't ruled on Cuba Gooding Jr. No, they have not. Like is something, what do we don't know? Yeah, so I- I think this is all good, but I won't be like relieved until homeboy has a sentence. Yes. Until he's found guilty. I agree. But we've learned from Kevin Spacey and so many other people like that's not always the case. Like just because there's tons. I mean, OJ, just because there's tons of evidence doesn't mean anything. This is so ironic because he played OJ. It is. And like I do hate Cuba Gooding Jr. with every fiber of my being, but he was so good as OJ. He was great. I mean, that show was just really excellent. You can be like a bad person and a good actor. So true. Actually, you could argue most bad people are good actors. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Next story is one for you because Jennifer Aniston has made her Instagram debut. Not only that, but she has joined with a friend's selfie of the friends. Um, okay, like, I know that this story is, like, written for me, and everyone has been asking me about it today, like, all the podcasts we did today, and just, like, a million DMs, and it's, like, all over my Instagram, and, like, I actually don't give a shit. Is that bad? No. And you know what? That actually makes sense, because you've never been a Jennifer Aniston. No, I love that. I love that. I have not. Like, what's, it's just interesting to watch her growth. Like, this morning, she had 100,000 followers, and now she has 4 million. Oh, And Courtney Cox who's been on Instagram forever. And Courtney Cox is very thirsty on Instagram. Like she's always with celebrities. She's always posting friends references. She has 4.1. So I'm thinking Jennifer Aniston is going to succeed her. Oh my God, she's at 4.5. <gasps> oh, oh my God, I checked like 30 minutes ago. It was four. Holy shit. I wonder what it'll be tomorrow when this episode drops. Over five. Could you imagine getting that many followers in one day? That's yeah. Crazy. I mean, I guess she, her and Courtney Cox are both, fa- both famous from the same thing, but you probably would argue that Jennifer Aniston is much more famous. Yeah, and Jennifer Aniston like still does movies and is out there and and Courtney Cox if she's doing that stuff like I haven't yeah. I haven't come into contact. Well, what was really interesting about this story and, and that what people aren't talking about is the first picture she posted was with the six friends, which I thought was so cute because just love that one and two. Are any friends missing? No, that's there's all only six. six friends. Yes, Jackie. No, I know there's only six friends, but it looks like there's two people in that picture. Like I couldn't. I was like, I was like, oh, where's? Oh no, yeah, no, here. like Phoebe, I guess is there. Yeah, I thought there was more than six friends. No, it just looks like very few people. That is so weird. But what is so interesting is that I don't know why I've been made to think that not all the friends are friends. Like, I think there was a rumor for a long time that David Schwimmer was not really in with the crew. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's good to see that they're all hanging out. And I didn't really realize that they all have Instagrams and literally none of them ever post because they all had to post for the friend's 25th anniversary. Like they did some sort of like partnership. And I clicked on everyone's Instagrams from the Jennifer Addison and every single one of them, their most recent picture was that friend's 25th anniversary from like a month ago, except for Lisa Kudrow. Okay. Yeah, she's very relevant. Very active. And she ran into Mira Sorvino, who played Romy. She ran into her. They fold scarves. Okay, wait. She ran into (laughs) her at a party like a couple weeks ago and they took a picture together and she was like, You're totally the Mary. Oh my God. And then Mira commented, 
I beg to differ. Like, it was so cute. And then I went to Mira's Instagram and she is like, all she does is talk about Romeo and Michelle. She was taking pictures of all these Halloween costumes of the blue and pink dresses from Romeo and Michelle. Like, I was just like loving that they're leaning into this movie so much because it's the greatest movie. And I just hate when people hate the thing that made them famous. You know what I mean? 100%. I mean, Friends really made Lisa Kudrow famous, but like, Romeo and Michelle was still very much no. an important part of her life. They're was it embracing. after or during? I think during. Yeah. Maybe after. Well, I guess Jennifer Aniston before. joining Instagram is like a promotional thing for the morning show, which I'm just getting increasingly more excited oh. about. There's billboards billboards all over town. Yeah, it's There's coming in November. All over November first. Yeah, Margaret was just saying LA is just one big billboard. Look, okay, we're looking at a landscape right now. I see one, two, three, four, five, and I can't even turn. Six. Actually, it's a good way to know like what's in theaters, what is on TV, like what's coming. No, totally. Yeah. Did you know that Jason Momoa has a new show coming out on Apple TV? You know, I, I didn't. I but did I watch the trailer, and it's very strange. What is it about? It is about a land in the distant future from now where everyone is blind. And they're gonna say blonde. I'm like, it sounds like a lie. No, we're like people in like thousands of years from now. Everyone is like evolved to the point where they're blind. Um, and then he has a bebe, and the bebe can see. And then the elders of the community Ooh. want to kill the bebe because oh, that actually it's sounds kind of good. It's a magical bebe. That sounds good. Sounds like Twilight. It's interesting. Yeah, it's, give, it's giving me Twilighty vibes. It could be well done. Yeah. Cool. I trust Jason. Well, that's cool that this I is a promotion. Trust Jason. It's cool that this is a promotion for that film. I'm assuming. I'm wondering if she's going to be active on it. Like all the other friends, David Schwimmer has posted twice. Matt LeBlanc posts like once a year. She gives me like Gwyneth Paltrow vibes. Yeah. You know, she, like, but she doesn't have a business there. or like a brand that she would promote. Smart Water. No, maybe now because she's literally the face of Avino, Smart Water, I Love. Maybe now she'll like, get even more money from these sponsors that she works 100%. with for an Instagram posts every now and then. She 100%. will. Wow. I can't stop saying 100%. 100%. And <laughs> usually instead of that, I say totally or, you know. Totally. And I guess I'm evolving towards 100% and I need to evolve out because 100%. I I'm not feeling it. What do other people say? Agreed? No, people are, no people say this. Right, yeah. Oh, right is horrible. Yeah, and I only say right when I'm not listening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I also say yeah. Yeah. Lot. Or no, what no, by like, the way, you know I'm not listening if I say this. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Or no, no, this. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, you, no. Putting in a fake laugh is so much effort. Like, that's actually flattering. If you took the time to fake laugh for me, I appreciate that. I've definitely fake laughed before, but this show is so naturally funny. I don't have to. <laughs> Oh, God. I wonder what the correct thing to say is when you agree with someone. For sure. For sure, I say a lot. 100%. Let me know what you think is the least annoying. And totally. I'll stick with that. Totally. Totally rocking. Um, totally rocking. Okay, are you ready for our next story? Because Is this our third or fourth story? This is our fourth story. It came... We are cruising through these stories. We're cruising through these stories. I think we just like want to talk about anything other than the stories because we're just loving talking about ourselves today. No, and it's also like we're in LA. There's so much going on. Like this is irrelevant. Like we're busy being thirsty. We are being quenched by liquid IV. Like there's no time to be talking about the news. Liquid IV is saving my life this trip. And it's the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated. When you're traveling and just filming podcasts left, right, and center, you don't have time to just like chug a smart water. We're not all Jennifer Aniston, okay? Mm -mm. Um, and that's why Liquid IV is the beverage for us. Because if you're trying to drink more water, Liquid IV hydrates, with you, hydrates you two to three times faster and more efficiently than water alone. With an added bonus of vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and B12. They have a good, they have a give back mission which is where you can feel good and do good because Liquid IV has donated over 1.5 million sticks to date to places like Haiti, Uganda, Puerto Rico, and most recently in Nepal. With each pur purchase you make, Liquid IV donates a serving to someone in need all around the world. It's the fastest growing wellness brand and you can find them everywhere, even Costco. You can find their hydration multiplier sold at Costco's nationwide. All of their products use cellular transplant technology, CTT, which is a specific ratio of glucose, with sodium, and potassium. And when mixed with water, it helps your body absorb more of the water and nutrients nutrients that you're drinking directly into your bloodstream so basically it comes in little packets you pour it into your standard um beverage and it like basically takes the water that you're drinking and just makes it like so much better for you yeah and does better things for your body because sometimes i'll like forget to drink water i'll just like chug a bottle and it's that's so enough. silly no it's not even that it's not enough like drinking just chugging like that like it just goes right through my body and then i have to pee yeah you need the nutrients you need the electrolytes we absolutely love liquid iv and we know you will too right now our, right now our listeners will get 25 percent off at liquidiv.com when you use our code toast at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on Liquid IV's website. Go to liquidiv.com and enter our promo code toast to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com promo code toast. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. Liquidiv.com 
promo code toast sign on get properly hydrated it's so important and it will just change your day all of this talk about water is like really making me have to pee also i just drank like a full fountain soda when i should be drinking my liquid iv and i'm about to bust Okay, well, you're about to bust for this next story. Margo just walked in here, like, looking all suspicious. What's wrong? Yeah, she looks like she has, like, a goodie bag. Like, she just went trick-or-treating. I just want I just want you to know that Tani Rad brought me a gift. She knows who I am. Stop. What did she bring you? I don't know. I haven't opened it yet. It looks, it looks like, like Halloween, Halloween candy. candy. Oh, my God. A sweet so treat nice. for the snitch- snitchiest snitch. Oh, oh my, my God. God. That is so Oh, my God. So I'm freaking thoughtful. out. Yeah, that's why I walked in here looking like I'm freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, so Tanya's here. We'll wrap up the fifth story. I really And Becca Tilly is here, too. Oh, oh my God. It's yeah. scrubbing in. Scrubbing in. Oh, my God. Becca was supposed to be in Wyoming. Oh my god! Maybe she came back early for us. Oh my god, this is even better. I'm so excited. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Just get through the story. story. Okay. Try not to bust because I have a new couple alert for you that just came out of left field, and I need everyone's thoughts. I need all hands on deck because Amanda Stanton has been spotted with Brendan Fitzpatrick, former rich kid of Beverly Hills. TMZ has reported it, and you know what? They're sometimes wrong, but a lot of the time they're right. They said the pair was spotted holding hands at Nobu Newport Beach over the weekend. TMZ has learned Amanda and Brendan met through mutual friends and started each- seeing each other about a month ago. But like the way that I think about the story, like I believe that they met on Raya. For sure, by the way. Um, And then Reality Steve had posted a picture of someone's feet and like Amanda's hair. Yeah, Reality Steve's like tip was like, oh, I was like, that's cool. But this is literally not proof. These are a pair of converse. If it was just the Reality Steve photo, I don't know if I would have chosen it as a story today because like that does not a story make. TMZ corroborating the story and placing them at Nobu Newport Beach. Yeah. It's very specific. I think I'm going to believe. No, I definitely believe. And when I heard the two names together, it actually made a lot of sense. Um, and while I live for Morgan Stewart, and I'm really sad that her and Brendan couldn't make it work, I really liked Brendan on the show and I want him to find happiness. Like, I don't hate him just because I'm totally team Morgan because I'm like her number one fan. Um, for sure. So, so okay. Amanda's a great girl. And I think this is good. They both have like past histories. Like, you know, it's it's hard when you're divorced or you have kids, like you want to find someone who has like a similar life experience. And Amanda is divorced. So I think that actually this is a great match. Yeah, it's not and so Brandon, crazy. And Brendan like loved, if you watch Real uh, Rich Kids of Beverly Hills, like he definitely like wanted a family. And I think this is like kind of good. I think this is good too. And they've been able to date low key for a month. So they're past that like newborn phase. You know, it's like when we heard about Liam and Madison Brown going out, like we saw them out on their, on their first, first date. date. Like that's so scary. And that does not bode well because now they have all this pressure. And it can, it can can ruin public relationships and I think it does Demi Lovato Mike Johnson 100% even though agreed. he didn't help his own case 100% agreed for sure totally and for sure totally <laughs> and uh, so I think they're in a good spot for this to become public news and I ship I ship I I my ship is coming in my ship is coming in I want happiness for everyone involved like Morgan Stewart is my idol queen obsessed with her so obsessed. excited for her to be obsessed. here tomorrow I can't even talk to you oh, about it even announce it oh we're going to do it. Well, by the time this episode is up tomorrow, we will have already announced it. I'm so excited. And I want to play a game with her because the Toasters did a huge post in the Facebook group. Who should Morgan Stewart date next? And I actually just want to read them off to her and see what she thinks. A hundred Because she's the most totally. eligible bachelorette in this town. And she could date anyone she wants. Why are you laughing? Because I every, said. No, every time I say 100%. <laughs> oh, I thought you were laughing. I'm catching because, myself. I thought you were laughing because when we started this episode, I was like, Jackie, I'm so tired. I'm not going to be able to talk. And I literally haven't let you say uh, one word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that happens, happens every time. Every single time. We're also filming a behind the scenes Patreon video of our trip. And you will see how tired we were before we did this episode and how she said i have nothing left to say also i launched pre-sale today for six new shows um a couple in upstate new york ontario um margo help me kansas city finally the kansas tarry city town Kansas. tarry town verona new york Angle- um Inglewood, new jersey so if you weren't able to get tickets to my beacon show which i know a lot of you weren't there are now other options in Inglewood, tarry town which is like i think near westchester um tickets available at growthnojob.com the uh pre-sale has started but because like if you're listening to this episode you're obviously a good toaster like you deserve of pre-sale the code is djt123 all caps and pre-sale for every i mean artist on sale goes on sale like on friday so you can get tickets before everyone else girl with no job.com code djt123 you're wondering why i said verona so excitedly but that's the town that bell was from from beauty and the beast (gasps) obviously that was in france new jersey She's from New Jersey. No, it's New York. It's New York. She's from Verona, New York. <laughs> Got it. No, but you know, it's probably named after that that town. So it's deep rooted in Disney history. You told me that the fifth story is gonna blow my mind. The fifth story is one of these crazy lifetime movie stories. Can't believe it's true. Can't believe it's real. It's crazier than the adult child dwarf story no. of of weeks past. Yes, it is. 
I think so, at least. And I haven't heard it anywhere else. So it's not like a Toast exclusive because it's from people.com, but we're about to blow this thing up. People always have has those stories. Remember like back in the Human day? Interest, in, I think in it's a, called. In a People magazine. Like, oh, at it is the very, called Human Interest. At the very end, they always have like crazy fucking stories. Yeah, yeah. I once read the craziest one in 17 when I was younger. 17, we used to live for that magazine. They used to working. write like the craziest shit in the back of that magazine that like sticks <laughs> with you. And it's probably all false. Yeah. Like tips and tricks what for like dating What was the craziest one that you read? Oh, it was, you know, about a, a like a girl from Haiti who was like living as a slave for her family it was like oh my god that sounds like that SVU episode yeah but anyways woman reunites with child she thought died after birth 30 years ago what it makes me want to cry Tina Bergiarno said she was told her child died minutes after she gave birth I want I really want to stop laughing because it's like this is such a sad story but you basically said vagina you're like vagina (laughs) vagina This is terrible. Okay, I'm it's Bejarano. Okay, Bejarano. Just say Tina, okay? Okay. A mother has been reconnected with her child almost three decades after she was told the baby died minutes following birth. Holy shit. Tina of Los Banos, California, welcomed a daughter when she was 17, she explains to Cape MPH. But a day after the baby girl was born, Tina's mom delivered devastating news about the child, Kristen. The The, mom? The next day, she comes back to tell me that the baby died 15 minutes after it was born. It never made it. It was sick. For the next 29 years, Tina and her husband, Eric, would celebrate the baby's birthday. It was always a painful experience no matter how much time had passed. Quote, it was a hard time every year, she told KMPH. I would get depressed. I would cry all the time. Oh, my God. She would go into major depression, added the husband who uh, they got married shortly after the baby's death. And now they share five children. Wow. But Tina would be in for the surprise of a lifetime when her daughter encouraged her to get a DNA kit test in 2017. Oh, my God. 23 man. It always comes back to 23 me. After taking it, Tina received an email from a man living across the country in New Jersey, she told KMPH. Quote, I think we need to talk. It says we're related and it says you're my mom, the email read. Uh, Recalled Tina, who would soon learn of the horrible truth. But her, what was Tina's background? Was she adopted or she just thought like her parents were her parents? Um, The, the child. Listen, um, it turns out that Tina said that her mother had been abusive and told her while she was pregnant that she couldn't keep the baby. When she told her that baby died, Kristen asked. When she told her that baby Kristen had died after being born, Tina's mother had actually put her up for adoption. Wow. Tina told the outlet. Wait, I thought it was a son. No. She thought she had a daughter. It turns out it was a son. Oh, Oh my God. Tina said, I don't care. I don't care if he's in. uh, Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Kristen told Tina about being raised in Las Vegas and transitioning into a man. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So okay. Now, that makes more okay. sense. Now he is a man. She said, Tina said, I don't care. I don't care if he's in transition. I don't care if he hasn't transitioned. I don't care. That's my kid. We're just glad he's alive. What oh the God. fuck? What? Where's the mom now? Is the mom still alive? Uh, it's, it's 30 years ago. Holy shit. The People magazine finds the craziest fucking stories. This is horrible. I don't know who it's for, worse for. I think it's worse for for Tina, who lived with 30 years of like depression right. over over a lost child. And I don't even know. And I hope to not go in. I'll never know what that's like, but it's such a terrible thing. Or is it worse to have never known who your parents are? Only find them when you're 30. It's everyone's a loser here. Like, yeah, no. yeah, I think it's it's I mean, it's just comparing like pain. But I think right. it's, it was definitely harder for Tina, who knew what she had lost versus yeah. for her son, who probably just thought he was adopted. Yeah. And probably had hopefully loving parents a loving, yeah. and yeah. didn't and, really know any better. Yeah, but is that not the craziest thing you've ever That's heard? That's insane. That's insane. That's like reminds me of Jefferson Housewives when it turns out that Juanita is not Gabby's daughter. I was daughter. just thinking about the other day. And when I rewatched that episode, I was like, oh, I forget how they undid this because Juanita is obviously Gabby's daughter. She looks just like Celia. She looks just like Gabby. And she looks just like fucking Carlos and Carlos's mom. How did they undo it? They didn't. It was true. She wasn't her daughter. Yeah, but so, I mean, that doesn't happen every day. But like, do you switch back in that situation? Well, that was the question in, in Desperate Housewives. They found the parents of the other girl and Gabby fell in love with Grace, who was really her true biological daughter, but they were undocumented and they ended up getting deported. Oh yeah, and that episode of when Gabby calls love I mean, and she's crying. Oh my god, it's oh my a god, horrible it's, episode. It's horrible. And that's where Gabby, I really started to hate her because she called the immigration on the parents because she wanted to keep the daughter here, and she and it ended up getting everyone in trouble. Like so stupid. That's when Gabby like became my least favorite character in, in television history. Oh my god, I don't remember this storyline. I remember the storyline, but not how it ended. That is so awful, and I hope that doesn't happen. Like regularly no i mean obviously it's a dramatized series but it was really fucking crazy because and what this are you story is crazy like, what's protocol do you switch back I, I don't know because juanita was their daughter for 10 years like how do you just stop loving her even though you're not technically related to her right well then it becomes but, a question of nature versus nurture right 
three identical strangers. Yeah. Always comes back. Everything always comes back to Everything. 23 and me and identical strangers. 100%. Totally for sure. Awesome. Right. On that note, let's go get back in Tanya. We need to like take a break because I need to talk to Becca. I didn't even know she was coming. We right. get questions for her. Let's post something on our Instagram while I go pee. Yeah. So I don't turn this beautiful white couch a little yellow, maybe red, you know, if it's that time. Of Stop. Stop <laughs> it. Sorry. We love you guys. We'll be right back with Becca and Tanya from Scrubbing In. We are very excited. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, toasters, we are back with the Scrubbing In X TMT collab. And the last time we collabed, <laughs> it was kind of controversial. <laughs> and I'm excited to just be out here. I'm so glad you're here. We thought we were just having Tanya because you were in Wyoming. I don't know where this uh-huh. communication happened. Well, it happened because you said you were going to be in Wyoming. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Am you know, I wrong? You no, know, to be honest, when she texted me this morning, she texted me this morning and she goes, um, are we doing the pot? I was like, yeah, where were you in the text? Okay, I'm glad I wasn't <laughs> hey, the only one confused. I planned my whole... I booked a super early flight so I could be here for this. We are so honored. (laughs) We are so honored. We are so happy to have you guys because you guys are a dynamic duo. Ladies Who Podcast, Scrubbing In. We were just at the Lady Gang before this. They love you over there. We love you. And we are so excited because the toasters love you. Mm Mm-hmm. You guys, we love you. We love you. (laughs) Well, I'm a toaster, which is the best. An honor to be here. I mean, I have so much to talk to you about, but I need to talk to you first and foremost about you talking about the Jonah Hill thing on radio with Ryan Seacrest. (gasps) Oh my god! And Ryan Seacrest was like the morning roast, and you were like, actually, it's the morning toast. (laughs) And just like (laughs) doing the Lord's work, it was such a point of pride for us. Yeah, we really appreciate you. How crazy is that story, though? Justice for Ruthie, never forget it. Never Never forget forget it. it. So the funny part is about that is that like, so I do these trending reports for the morning show, and I'm always trying to find things that like aren't. You that know, are different. that are different. And so like, I'll try and find stories and I'll try and get like m- to do like my spin on the story or like whatever, you know, like how I would what would I would do if I was this star or whatever. Yeah. But when I listen to you, I listen to the morning toast every morning and um, I heard you guys talk about this Jonah Hill thing. I was like, I haven't seen this on any like this is not on Us Weekly. No, this it's is underground. Nowhere. Yeah, it's so underground. Yeah. And I was like, this is. This is premium content. Yeah. So I was like, I got to bring it to the morning show. Give credit where credit is and due. And I just can't believe like Ryan Seacrest said the morning roast. Well, he said he said the morning roast, but I know what he meant. But I, I corrected one him. one letter wrong. Yeah, and, and I corrected him. And that's him. enough for yeah. us. Yeah. Like that's our level <laughs> of fame. It's like one letter away from being on Ryan right. Seacrest's tongue. <laughs> yeah, we're okay with that. We are okay with that. <laughs> yeah, no, we're in a yeah. good spot. But I felt like it was like, uh, really the story needed to be heard. No, it's the It's crazy. like a PSA. Ruthie could have been this girl who I just know. got engaged. He was like in wedding mode. Yeah. I know. Clearly. 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 Um, you just got back from my Wyoming. Yes. I because did. you just launched a clothing line with Macy's, which is like the craziest thing ever. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you. It's very impressive. Thank you so much. How, what is that like now? You're like, what do you call yourself? Because you're a host, you're an influencer, now you're a designer. Like, we struggle with labels here. Like, I've now decided I'm a comedian and Jackie's a host. I'm a host, yeah. Um, what do you guys call I yourself? I go host. Oh my gosh, I struggle with this right? so much. Like, if you're on a panel, they would say, Becca Tilly, comma. They actually say, uh, I think the. W- what is used as digital influencer and podcaster. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. But now you're a designer. Now I'm just a, you know, fashion designer. A medley. But I got to a point where I, when strangers would ask, I would just be like, I'm in marketing or I'm in sales <laughs> because I didn't want any follow-up questions. Yeah. yeah. You know, older people don't get it. Yep. No, like, not at all. And those conversations influencer. don't get easier. Like, it's so no. awkward. But then there are some things that you can say. Like, you could say podcaster and most people would get that. Yes. But when you say, like, digital content creator, storyteller. Influencer. Um, it gets a little <laughs> dicey. Yeah. <laughs> so, but podcasting, I think it's a great place to be. I'm glad that you guys, like, relate to the struggle because it's something we go through all the time. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that y'all relate podcaster. to the struggle. Well, yeah. you also have the radio show. Like, which no, you're, which you, could, yeah, you could always say that and no one's gonna be like what's the radio yeah. <laughs> like, you know? you're good you're set for life tanya yeah i don't have any sympathy or empathy for your struggle I people, always, people always say it, like i always get put like music expert i'm like oh that's, that's pretty you cool. are yeah, no, I'm, I'm into that i I'm actually like, okay. learn like a lot of music from your instagram stories your Instagram stories are very dynamic because I feel as though I'm like motivated to work out but never enough to like actually go. Um, I learn new music and then I'm like motivated to like change my life and be a modern woman, you know? <laughs> so there's big dick energy and then there's modern woman energy. Wow, that is, that makes me so happy because that's exactly oh, what I Oh, and then it's do. also like, this bitch is friends with every celebrity. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> right. That's that also the aspirational factor And like, of it. yeah, you just seem like a great friend. Yes, and you're it's like, like always supporting your friends. I need to friends. work on my friendship skills. <laughs> me too. And I'm like, no wonder why I have no friends. I'm never supporting anyone because like you're always like, Sophia Carson, Unicef. Like you just did that. Like you are all over all the collabs. Do you have like a schedule? <laughs> so I don't know how she is. <laughs> I think the thing that I I realize is that like especially 
for women in this industry it's like if we're not supporting each other and we're not blasting each other as loud as we can like mm, are the men doing it for us right I'll, no they ain't <laughs> right. so it's like i'm gonna do it so hard for the people in my life that matter to me and that's what we were just saying on the lady gang podcast because they love you so much and it's like technically scrubbing in morning toast lady gang like are competitors like right but yet we're all here doing each other's podcasts i've done that's your guys podcast that's it. just not how we it's see like it everyone else is the enemy not these people yeah. Yeah. yeah and it's like people like kelty and you guys like you guys are so like supportive it never like dawned on you like not to do our podcast or vice versa you know what i mean yeah. mm -hmm. and that that's a modern woman right totally do you know what's so funny is i just did the lady hanging with them and kelty was like I didn't want to like you when I first met you because I just like show up to this carpet and like Charlie Puth's kissing your cheek and everyone like <laughs> loves you and I was like who's this girl la la yeah. and she's like and I met you and I really liked you and she was like how do you like sometimes it's so hard because it is such a competitive industry and like I, I'm an inherently jealous person like of everyone and I think there's a little bit of that in everybody yeah. but I think like I think that when you really think about it at the end of the day like we're all so different like even Be Beck and I like we yeah. could not be more different it's like everybody has something so unique to offer and it's like you can't really like compare it. Yeah. Like everybody literally has something so different to offer. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, you're actually really surprised, not in like traditional Hollywood, but like in the space that we're in, like for the most part, you meet everyone and they're really nice. Yeah. yeah. Which is shocking. And like, yeah. I was listening to the morning toast. I was, I don't know. You probably mentioned it a lot, but that you want your comedy special on Netflix. Yeah. And or, like, or any streaming platform. I will literally take what I can get. Pornhub. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Pornhub. Like, I, have now taken, toast. I have taken that on as my, have like, you? Totally. If I, like, I know I have friends that work at Netflix and I'm like, oh, we need to like, this needs to happen. Wow, like, we've been I'm in like, LA four days and right. things are happening. Things are happening. Well, I mean, I we were on TV last night. We were on TV last night. We went to Dancing with the Stars. Like we were being thirsty in the background, like clapping for everyone. Hi. <laughs> it was amazing. On Dancing with the Stars. Did Actually, it's much that? more a Jackie thing. Like, oh, now we've been having this conversation all day. So, because you know how uh, Chrissy Brinkley went and then she got injured, oh, so right. Sailor went yeah. in. So it's like maybe they were offered to me and I would like do it for a week and then like fake fall on my hand and then be like, oh no, I can't. But, like maybe my sister could do it. Jackie's an amazing dancer. It's my career goal to be yeah. Dancing with the Stars, and I'm in Wait. no like uh, tier of stardom right now to do it. But if I could ride my sister's coattails all the way there, I'm not too proud. No, and then I would be there every day, just be like. Yeah. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Wait, you could totally do dancing with the I know. I know. She's an excellent dancer. Yeah, and I can learn some new moves like mm -hmm. the ja the waltz. Have you ever been offered? Either of you? Oh, no. Because a lot of people uh, from The Bachelor. Yeah, it's normally a lead, though. Oh, is it? Yeah, I guess yeah. Nick. Uh, Joe, think... grocery store Joe. True. Oh, yeah. Okay, he had like, he just blew up. Blew five up. Minutes. He had a great bachelor stint. yeah he didn't I did do too, anything but I'm not, no complaints but like it, he went home Meanwhile, we're out here and like, working every day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not only is he famous he's grocery store joe right. he could open up a grocery store right. joe literally, literally. he has a big career ahead of him yeah wait yeah. so do we need to get on the dancing with stars jackie o campaign okay yes okay Such like one of my favorite campaigns tanya tebow that oh, i yeah. actually fell for i thought you were dating tim yeah. tebow there are so while. many rumors about like who you both because you talk a lot about your dating life for sure on the show for are you sure. talking like you know code words yeah like well, dr venus or whatever did you say dr venus dr wussy or something well, <laughs> doctor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that wasn't um, his real name right no i give them nicknames because i just don't want see. yeah and like this person doesn't choose to like my profession yeah. is my profession and like also the thing is i get really excited when i date somebody it's not like a producer sitting here being like you need when are you gonna talk about your love life it's like right. i just get excited i'm like blah, blah, blah. it's, it's like, exciting yeah Excited. Like, i have to give them a, a like nickname so that you know yeah that's fair but then do they listen to the episode and like know that you're talking about them and does can that I, can i interject here please so tanya recently dated a guy and she swore that he did not listen because she asked him not to and she's like no he doesn't listen and i'm like if i'm dating someone yeah. and they have a podcast where i know they talk about their dating life i'd be like no it's like yeah. a cheat sheet. Subscribe. Oh, she yeah. liked this. She didn't like that. Wants more of this. Yeah. Something like this. Like it'd almost be dumb for him not to listen just to learn yeah. like She's what's right. good. But it's also an doing? unfair advantage. Sure. Yeah. Like does he actually like Laffy Taffy's or only knows that you do so because you said it. <laughs> and right, then you know? it's like you could get engaged and married to this person and it's like you know nothing about them. They're just doing exactly what you, they know you well, wanted. Yeah. Right. And then they it's like a whole relationship built on lies. Oh, but she's she's <laughs> please not to scare you. Yeah, not yeah. to scare you. She's Don't happy. worry, you'll, you'll be fine. Have yeah. either of you ever felt? You guys share so much on your podcast and on the radio. Do you ever had a moment where you felt like you overshared? I don't share a lot. I I'm like a lot more private than Tanya. Uh -huh. I share a lot, but I don't talk a lot about my dating life. Mm -hmm. And so I could share about anything and everything, and people are still like, "We want more." Oh, is that like that's the one thing that you well, won't budge on, and yeah, that's and the they, one thing that they, they want? Yeah, and they follow me from being in a relationship that's on the true. back. So I that's I true. totally get it. Yeah. At first, I was like, "Why are, Why do they need to know everything?" But I'm like, I get it. Yeah, so I just have to be like. 
you, you just know, go at my it. own pace. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And what about you? Do you ever, <laughs> have you ever felt like you overshared? <laughs> Every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> literally like i the sad thing is and so okay so i went through like a really bad breakup and i did it i didn't do it on the air but it was when i was with ryan and um it was just like really sad and i like went through it like hardcore so it's kind of been like like my dating life has been just kind of like a part of, of like, the show of the show yeah. and sometimes it does get really the only thing that sucks is when it ends like with a guy and then everybody is like oh like obviously she's so annoying oh my, like i would so dump her annoying. too and it's like they don't know like exactly what happened because when things end like i try to be respectful and just mm-hmm. say like yeah we're not dating anymore or whatever i don't really go into details and i'm yeah. like if you only knew half of the stuff that like right mm-hmm. right not my by the fault. way you're not annoying i would date you thank you so much <laughs> yeah, it's a, a hard laugh. line to walk because yeah. you don't want to like make yourself look bad but you also don't want to like air someone's dirty laundry who's not in totally that. but also i'm like this is what dating is it's like yeah. you end something and then it's like i gotta get back up and get on the horse but like all of this is foreign to us because like we're married and we've never had to know what it's like to like share updates on your dating life and i'm sure it fucking sucks yeah like it, dating's hard enough it doesn't yeah. suck because it's so exciting so it's like oh my god i come in and i'm like oh yeah I like my does, <laughs> does your career afford you exciting dating opportunities right like, do you like could you meet- put in and ask to ryan and be like i know you're friends with so-and-so with no Jenner, so Sevilla. with Z- uh we had zachary i had like a gigantic zachary crush levi. on zachary levi oh, and he came on the morning show and do you remember that and like yeah. it was actually really funny like ryan tried to kind of like make something happen but without really making like you know what i mean like not very like very casual very casual and it was actually pretty we good. do that with snitch all the time all the time <laughs> yeah yeah could have been snitch hortzman yeah could have been snitch <laughs> oh hill thank god it was it could have been yeah. snitch hill Who's Hill? Who's Jonah. Hill? No. <laughs> <laughs> Justice for Ruthie. Never Justice forget. Justice for Ruthie. <laughs> Justice for Ruthie. Never forget. Okay, so what happened when he like fake set you up? Um, it like well, we had already talked, so we already knew each other, and we kind of had like a good thing, like kind of. It's so cute. But we never really actually gone went out ever because he was like in and out, and he was promoting the movie, and oh. was like in the now of the city. Have you ever dated anyone famous? Because you're like you are always meeting famous people. Like yeah. you just had a picture with Normani on your Instagram, like. <laughs> Like you're always like with Norma. celebs. Oh, yeah, it's like her everyday it's life. It's crazy. Is, yeah. And it you is. don't think it's crazy, but like it is. It is kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, have I ever did, dated anybody famous? Like even just like a coffee date. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who? Ooh. Who you have a coffee date with? They have nicknames. Say, yeah. Can you tell us Say. TV or movies? No. TV, movie, oh, or influencer? We'll guess. Yeah. Well, some of them you probably would not know. Well, remember okay. the guy I made out with? Ooh. You remember, there's like three. Give us the realm. They, they, yeah. Wait, one TV? of them was a CW on a CW show. Riverdale? Riverdale? No. Kid Jappa. No, this is Kid Jappa. No. no. <laughs> and then one of them was from a reality show. Which one? Bachelor. Oh. Bachelor? No. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, there is a Bachelor <laughs> person. There better be. There better be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or been eligible singles. No. Bravo? No, this is the past, you know. Oh God, We're fine. looking towards the future. I mean, survivor. You know, you know all of She's these a people. Survivor. Kind of I know CW. That one you might not know. He's I married see. now, so it's like kind of Oh, like, actually, I appreciate that. Don't yeah, yeah. I I agree. Yeah. Um, how did you guys meet? I wanted to ask that question too. At a pool party. We met at the iHeart Vegas pool party. Oh. In May. We just realized it was May and I'm not June. I'm so happy she remembers our friend. Because now. we had a best friend's quiz and I got that wrong. So now it's like seared in my memory. It was May. And then she moved into my apartment complex and we shared a wall for like a year. That wow, that's intimate. Years. A year and a half. <laughs> That the, is. It is. It's the best thing ever. I yeah. made her like keep her door unlocked. So every time I came home from work, I would like come in and be like, ha, ha, it's like oh. a roommate, but you don't have to like have a roommate. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to be alone. Yeah. That sounds so fun. It was the best. And you guys have been podcasting now for how long? Two Over two years. Yeah. And like, you guys won a People's Choice Award. Oh What's my that? God, like? yes! <laughs> I'm sure. nominated again this year. It must be nice. <laughs> must be nice. <laughs> We're happy for you. I wasn't gonna bring it up. I <laughs> no, know. I'm glad you did. Thank you for reminding me, Jackie. You're welcome. Um, so let's talk about that. Who did you have to pay? Um, yeah. it, that's honestly private. <laughs> the first year, like literally last year, when they told us we were nominated, we both were like. Are we being punked? Is right. this like yeah? For like real? it felt like a mean joke. It did feel like a mean joke. Once I looked at the list and it was like Oprah, Anna right. Humor, it right. was like mm, someone's like doing something mean and here. And honestly, I thought for sure Lady Ying was going to win because they had just gotten a show on E. Oh, right. So it's like you guys really won based on your merits and your votes, which is really cool. It's so cool. And honestly, like we campaigned really hard last year. <laughs> like we went hard for the votes. I had like my family, like everybody in Serbia voting every single day. 25 times a day. 25 times a day. I had my uncle's like a professor in Serbia. I had it like all the students in his class were voting every day. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What's your last name? Radisavljevic. (laughs) 
I kept you thinking you were done, so I was like, watching <laughs> 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 you. I was like, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I understand why you go by rat. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's just a lot cleaner professionally. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's so like, great question. Yeah. It never curious. occurred to me that might not be your real name. <laughs> Every Tanya, time, say it I... one more time. Ruddy Savievich. That's so cool. I spec up she can spell it. Oh. It's okay. I know you don't know. Like, R A D J I V. So wrong. Oh. So wrong. <laughs> I, sometimes I have to book her flights and I'm like, oh, I just God. one more time. Send yeah. me the name. You should keep it in your notes. App, app I just have phone. to search R I Yeah. 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 Oh my God. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah. We got tons of questions of you guys for you guys from social media for both of you specifically. So without further ado, I'm just going to rattle them off and feel free to answer to your best ability. Okay. Wow. Um, I'm going to in with a Oh, yeah, because I need to find one. There's so many comments. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still working with Teddy Mellencamp and holding yourself accountable? Oh, that's a great question. Did you do All In? I did All In. You I look did so it. good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I um I did it for about a year. Wow. I'm not on it anymore, but it works. Wow. Yeah, I heard she gives you like five calories a day. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what I heard. <laughs> it's not great. It's not a lot of food, yeah. but like it's so weird. And almost that's kind of why I started posting like after I work out, like I post my stories and stuff like that because it's kind of weird when you feel like feel like you're in a community of people that's like in a healthy in it life. together yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's basically weird. like being a part of a podcast honestly totally but like you're all losing weight together instead of listening to the same show totally yeah yeah, yeah. okay I feel like uh, andy dorfman has done that with the endorphins thing she oh, has yeah, like a whole running, running community oh yeah she's running it with tyler c hello yeah. <laughs> would you ever date tyler c oh my god t- yes oh yes i yeah, would, you would. Okay. <laughs> he's like too pretty i think um this is for both of you guys you guys have had a ton of guests you just celebrated your 100th episode right mm-hmm. yes. you've had tons of guests who is the one that like starts you the most uh you oh, stop. <laughs> um <laughs> sec fine second most second most um camilla Luddington. i wasn't there for no so Ana- really? she's a Grey's anatomy oh. character oh right, oh guys we don't we, watch Grey's anatomy but we respect your we, love we respect your stand but like i've never even seen an episode like i don't even know what mcdreamy means <laughs> it's something from mcdonald's yeah <laughs> on the dollar menu <laughs> Like, we know nothing about it. And, like, I just feel like I'm way too far behind. I'm sure I would like it, but, it's like... It's actually probably a great show to, like, yeah. binge watch It's uh-huh. great from the beginning. Is it still on? Mm-hmm. Is it considered, like, a soap opera? At this point. At this point, it's just on for so long. Like a dramedy? Yeah. A dramedy. Well, no, but, like, it's not a dramedy. It's definitely a drama. <laughs> it's not funny. Sometimes it's, like, <laughs> it's not yeah. funny at all, no, but, like, We used to watch Desperate Housewives growing up, and, like, it was always on right after. And it's like, I can't believe that shit is still on. Yeah. yeah like, imagine if Desperate Housewives was still on. Oh. I mean, we would have a podcast called, like, About Desperate Housewives. Yeah. Desperate, yeah. Desperate Influencers. <laughs> 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 oh my god choke on my laughter um do either of you guys have any advice for someone moving to la how not to get sucked up in at all and stay true to yourselves because you both like go to a lot of cool things meet a lot of cool people but you're very normal both of you yeah um, you don't have to. thank you <laughs> <laughs> i'm not normal at all <laughs> like i'm the opposite of normal. what's the advice for that because it's like easy to get carried away like we got paparazzi last night and honestly we're, we're out, out of control, of control. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it took and that's all it takes next level. Yeah. we are addicted to but you guys thing. fucking live here like you've been paparazzi many a time like I do not. your name I is never always on the red carpet list that's true like how do you deal with it seriously and like not and not like really become an asshole I've only gone paparazzi when I'm with somebody. Like it's never for me. Still it's counts. always like. Okay. Still. Excuse me. I saw a video of you on TMZ through a fence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talking about Ryan Seacrest. Okay. <laughs> That oh, counts. Yeah, yeah. That was you alone. That was very that recently was. too. Yeah, that was great. And they were like yelling for me. I was like, from the Star Tours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, any advice? Um, get right. plugged into a community. I was just gonna say, like, moving here, having a group of friends already was very important. That's like outside oh, yeah. of the, you know, entertainment world. Yeah. Bubble. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good good advice. Yeah. Um, can we talk about Taylor Swift for a moment? Yeah. Love nothing more. So we've been sitting on this. Yeah. <laughs> so you, um. Did you interview her at, at Ryan Seacrest when she was promoting me? Yes. And she gave you merch? Yes. She gave me merch too. I know. I saw me that. too. Wait, Shut up. Me too, yeah. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> well, well Jackie's very like an outspoken. Um, it's no. okay. You've been on Kim Kardashian's Instagram stories. Oh, very yeah. true. true. I'm um, Team Kim. <laughs> and yeah. Taylor knew that. Yeah. Um, can you talk to me about that experience? Like, just like, uh, why well, is it funny? I'm dead serious. Like, interviewing yeah, yeah. Taylor. Yeah. Um, you will like, literally lose your mind when i tell you we did like um when she was premiere (laughs) 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 when she was releasing 1989 and she was like doing that whole campaign back then Mm -hmm. she filled in for a full morning it was like 
the Taylor Swift takeover, but she had to do it in New York City. So they sent over like two producers and I got to be one of them. So I was like literally in a small studio like this producing Taylor for the morning. And was she like funny, charismatic? Like what is she like? Just everything. Oh my God. It was everything. Yeah. Did you go to the Reputation Stadium tour? Obviously. You go to the rep room? Obviously. What? You didn't go to the rep room? No, I was thirsting for an invitation. (laughs) And then it turns out that the day, she did three shows in New York and I went to the third one and she didn't do a rep room that night. Well, that's why you didn't go. No, I mean, it's also like, even if there was, I probably wouldn't have gotten one. But now that I've been recognized with the merch, like maybe I'll get to the lover's lounge. For sure. But like, I can't believe that you got to go to the rep room. Do you have a picture with her? Yeah. I hate you like <laughs> so much. What were, what were this is my rules? jealousy. Like, what I can't... were the rules of the rep yeah, room? Yeah, good question. There wasn't any rules. So did you post your picture with her? Yeah. Oh. But they take the picture for you? They take the picture for you. So you, so you, have to you get it. it first. Yeah, 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 I would do that too if I was yeah, like, I would totally do that too. Um, we got a lot of questions if you guys would ever do a podcast tour for uh, Scrubbing In because people love you. And you guys just did a mean greet, right? At Nordstrom? At Macy's. <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We'll clip it. We'll clip it. I'm so sorry. Macy's. Would you ever take it on, take it on the road? <clears throat> we would love to. Yeah. In a perfect world, we would totally do it. We're working on it. It's just there's um like different there since you know we're with a big company there are rules and regulations so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. who's your dream podcast guest? I actually want to do a po- we've been talking about this like on different podcasts like a podcast merge with like oh like a bunch of podcasts yeah like um us lady gang yeah chicks in the office like girls like that's cute yeah podcast. we were talking on the lady gang podcast today about hosting a podcast award show since the one award show that gives out podcast awards refuses to acknowledge our existence <laughs> um and like maybe we do like the toasties and like we'd give out like host of the year you know and it would obviously go to us but <laughs> <laughs> no the toasties yeah It'd be like that's best epic. podcast hosted by a trio like yeah, best, best podcast, podcast hosted by pertaining to Grey's anatomy hosted by sisters yeah, like it's yeah. very specific Wait, really <laughs> specific yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd be down <laughs> best podcast Podcast hosted by uh, a bachelorette who was dating Trump, who is now dating Jason Tardick. You know, right, right, right. I don't know who it could go to. But I don't know. It's interesting well, if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just take a moment to appreciate the wonderful sunset happening behind us. I know this, this is, is so. A, this is like so LA. I'm having so much fun. Can we so not LA. stop? The, the city, city, the is city the best. views like has they have it over New York. The lighting here, like obviously you guys get the premium lighting, content. Yeah, left and right. I have a question. Though. Yeah, because I just came from Wyoming and I thoroughly Very to New York. enjoyed. <laughs> the fall weather mm-hmm. yeah and i got back here and i was mad at how hot it was you're missing out on the seasons here like it's really okay it's, so you do feel that but okay. you do get a bit of seasons in one day here like in the morning it is chilly no, we chilly. went to the valley oh my god we were dying <laughs> we were gonna throw yeah. up we were gonna throw up on the concrete lot like we were dying <laughs> yeah no and the winding roads to get there i, I thought maybe the city isn't for me maybe i won't move here yeah the valley like the the windy roads are really like nicholas yeah. canyon Coldwater canyon it's all like i never thought i would have something against the valley like i am the valley yeah we are valley <laughs> girls like, like Everyone always tells us that. I am. No, you're right. I am the, the windy roads. She really gets very seasick. Like she was going to throw up in the car. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. Um, I have a question. I'm not who I thought I was. Okay. Because you obviously started your journey here on The Bachelor, but like you've really evolved past it. Like I actually forget that like, you were on The Bachelor, which is a great thing. I mean that in a huge compliment. But there's so much like Bachelor tea and drama that like you're not involved in, but I would love to get your take on. Okay. Um, because Colton like recently came out swinging against Rachel Lindsay, which like I was personally not here for because like I really like Rachel Lindsay, saying like she's starting fights with everyone and her and Isn't she? her and Raven aren't friends anymore. Um, and I know you know all these people and you probably have more insider info than anyone else. Like wh- what side do you take? Where do you stand? I don't have much. I'm, I'm I don't know that I don't know any of those people that you just mentioned that well. Oh, I, thought you I, I don't know them. I'm like, okay, no, fucking I know liar. I like, like, literally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, who's Rachel yeah. Lindsay? What's no. She's Mariah Carey. I, yeah, I don't know her. her. I suddenly can't read. <laughs> like I'm I'm literally that person that's so curious about what's going on with oh, Raven really? and Rachel. Like I have no idea. But we know. I, I feel like because I including my you do know? But we would never sign. Oh, okay. Yeah. We you could tell us crazy. anything, by the way. And like, yeah, we're, we, we are really good friends. Like, trapdoor. That's what we always say. It's like when we watch Real Housewives or like Kardashians, and it always like, when what Jordan did to Kylie was so terrible because they were such close friends and like the Kardashians really value loyalty. It's like, we're there for you, Kylie. Like, we are really good friends. Right. Like, yeah. And like, even for you, if you guys want to like become best friends, like, we will be really keep your secrets. Like, we're not desperate actually, or anything. Tanya makes the friendship bar really high. Yeah, actually, know you know. Stressful. You know. Is it? Me, yeah. Is it? Like, I'm That's the worst. At- I mean, I, I'm like so just like, I don't. Do you ever get like, I'm like this, and I only ask because this is what I do. Do you ever get like jealous, like that she has so many friends, you know? It's like, I have friends, and like, you're not allowed to have other friends. Oh, see, no, I don't, because 
I couldn't handle that. Yeah, couldn't like handle I have enough with this oh, one. Like she a takes a lot of friend space we in my life. work together. But like she's such a great friend. Except I noticed she brought y'all like Halloween candy bags. <laughs> she did. And she did it for all of her neighbors. And she didn't bring you one? Well, well, maybe because she didn't know you were coming today. No, yes. no, I've seen her. I've seen her multiple times. Maybe because she's going to see you on Halloween and right. she has yes. a bigger, better oh, thing yes. planned. That's a really no. big cauldron. <laughs> <laughs> cauldron. <Candy. laughs> yeah. um, Becca, would you ever be the Bachelorette? Or I like always over it? say no, but like it's one of those things. that would be like. I'd have Game to consider, decision. right? Yeah. And yes, it's like where you're at in your life. Yes. If you're not dating anyone, like you would think about it. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I was single. If the money's point. good enough. Yeah. It's a lot of money, right? They have to ma- is it true they have to match your annual salary? Oh, I, that's what no, we had heard. That's what no we had way, heard. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, no, well, because now it's harder because everyone like becomes so influential. They're making way more money. Yeah. But it's like if you were a sales rep, they would just have to cover what your sales rep salary right. was. Well, they, they, do like my job. they do like my job before. What was, was your job before? I was a chiropractic assistant. If they oh. had to match my money, I'd make nothing. Do you know how to align a back? No, I was just, I, I was a chiropractic assistant. I basically made the appointments oh. and <laughs> brought people not, back. Like, so I won't ask things. you to adjust my back. No. <laughs> but someone on The Bachelor when we were filming was like, would you mind addressing me? And I was like, no. <laughs> you know, right. I don't, even I don't need a lawsuit get. on my hand. Yeah. Totally. Um, right. Talk about the process. This is from Marissa Flack of getting started on your own like label. Like, How do you just like start a label? Like, and become a designer. Like, Where do you get the like the paper to draw it you know like what you know what i mean yeah so i so they um, the toast merch yes com. yes toast.com restock yeah, coming soon merch baby next level yeah merch restock coming soon hey did it just sell out yeah the, the, i know i meant to uh get you a free sweatshirt but, but they were like, gone we can't, <laughs> we can't even get we can't sweatshirts even get i tried i'll get you a sweatshirt flag is the flag that I bought from when it went on sale. And like when other toasters like need a flag, like I ship them my flag. It's the sisterhood this of the traveling just flag. At it's wedding. in weddings. Oh, wow. It's going to a wedding in Mexico in December. Like it's, that's how, that's how we work around. Tanya we'll loves the sisterhood of a traveling something. Many yeah. Do you? Mm-hmm. What do you, tra- what do you s- sisters. say it again? Oh, for this, for their. Uh, you were just talking about money journals. Is that what you said? <laughs> I've started many journals. Many <laughs> journals. For the scrub sisters. Oh, that's cool. So you write in it? We all write in it, and then I ship it off. Oh, that's so cute. I love that idea. That's so nice. What does your shirt say? Too rad to be sad. Oh, my God. That's merch. I just made it. Oh, is that merch? Yeah. <laughs> well, for her, it's telling Your me own merch? Yeah, I just made it. Did you sell Actually, it? Actually, um, Jack Vanek. Yeah. Ma- help, ma- help me make it. Oh, yeah. This. She, she like, has a thing with t-shirts, right? Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Wait, I didn't answer my question. Oh, sorry. Go. Sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, pencils. Start, like paper. starting a line. Macy's I was calls just gonna you say, up. They reached out to me. I worked with a production team, so they were the ones who like designed. I just got to say like what I wanted. Right. So I was like, I love this sweater. What can we do it this way? Or I love this skirt. Right. Can we do it this way? How long was the whole process from start to finish? I started in January, and it was oh, wow. just released last week. So almost a year. It's like a baby. It's, it's like nine months exactly. <laughs> That's so exciting and it's huge. Congratulations! Yeah, and the stuff you. is so, so cute. cute. Thank and you. the pictures are so cute. Tanya so has been my. Best Muse. supporter, biggest supporter. Oh. I love you. It's so major that you it's learn your so name major. is on like a label in Macy's. It's yeah, like, like you have the crazy. tag. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Isn't it like the little things that like make it really special? Like, yeah, you have a clothing line, but the coolest part is the tags, I know. you know? Yeah. yeah, that got me really excited. Just let us know if we're keeping you too long because we got so many questions for you guys. Oh, no, I just okay. want to keep this is actually a really interesting question from Jackie Cerny. What do you just over like people like thinking about you? Like, are there any misconceptions about you? Like, people say so many mean things about us, and it's so not true. And like you guys probably don't have like as much shit to deal with as we do, but like, what do you just over what are y'all over i'm curious i'm over people messaging me about them i'm like yeah well so i went on their podcast (laughs) everyone thinks we're like these evil Evil, like kkk members it's actually so crazy (laughs) no literally like so i went for those who don't know i went on your guys' guys, podcast by the way which was so nice nice. i didn't even know you back then and i was like damn this girl's so nice she really is a good friend um (laughs) i went on your podcast we had such a good time janelle Parrish was there like i thought i thought we were hilarious the moral compass thing remember like we had such good shtick and then like i was in trouble i'm like what did i do and your viewers were very upset that you guys had me on your show. Totally, almost like like I'm like David Duke or something, you know? Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like a like a racist like, leader. I know, no, I know. And so I really appreciate a you guys having me and then b going to bat for me. Well, because it's like everybody makes mistakes. We all make mistakes and we all say and do things that like we've regretted. And like, I just don't believe that you're your past. You know I what I mean? Like, yeah. it's yeah, just it's so true. and then like, you can't grow. Totally. Yeah. It's just like, who are we? Like, t- you know, cast the first stone. The he who has not sinned. Wow. It's like we've all it's quoting verses. <laughs> no, but it's true. And it's I'm true. Like, I'm so tired of the cancel culture because it's it's fine if you like if it's current. But from something that's 
so far in your past to me yeah. is just it's not fair like no one gives grace no we no one gives until grace. they need it there's like right. there's that's such a good point and there's like so much value in like growth and like learning from your mistakes but like no one's allowed to I know. it's like you said something 10 years ago like that's who you are now yeah yeah and it's like why do you want that to be who i am now right, right. like we can do our show every single day and make people smile and make people happy and people just want to think that we are these evil people but it's like why do you want that to be these people in the world who are influencing right. other people yeah why not look and see the good that we do yeah why does yeah. it make you happy i also to think, think that's part people? of the charm of this this podcast it's like you guys actually keep it real and we you talk say, and like yeah. a lot of people go through like huge public things and then never want to talk about it because like it's embarrassing and it actually yeah. is really hard to talk about there's not a day that goes by where we don't talk about it like because it, i feel like the less you talk about it the more other people talk about it totally but if i'm bringing it up all the time like there's no way for anyone to like like you know shame me for that yeah, yeah. and now it's just like so part of the Who culture and like because we've been through it like we feel it's important to speak on it because it just ha it's the in the amount that it's happening now like even that guy who was just trying to do charity with um, um, the the beer company, beer company just looking for um it like she was donating money to the Iowa the um, Children's Hospital oh right, and right, right a reporter found his old tweets from like so so long ago right and that should not be happening so yeah. we are here to say stop it um yeah. Becca would you <laughs> are you gonna be a bachelorette for JoJo. Ooh. You mean a bridesmaid? Oh, sorry, I can't speak. <laughs> bridesmaid. Well, all of her, we're calling all of her bridesmaids bachelorettes since she was Wait, a bachelorette. It's honestly, wow, <laughs> am I an insider? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, she hasn't officially asked me, but she told, um, I think like Us Weekly or something that she was going to ask me, but <laughs> I heard from them. That's hilarious. <laughs> so um, I'm waiting to get like my, you know, Your beautiful package. like dove delivery with like yeah. a oh, all the scroll things. and yeah. But yeah, that's so exciting. I'll probably say yes. You aside, should. aside from obviously Becca's line with Macy's, where do you guys shop for clothes? Because you guys have to like go to events and stuff. Like you do guys you are always stylist? doing stuff. You're looking at her. Really? Yeah. She no. She she really gives me way too much credit. She buys no. really cute clothes and she'll send me photos and be like, "Which one do you like?" And ha, she so thinks like, that that's me styling her. And I'm like, "No, you put that." I together. tell everybody, I'm like, Becca styles me. It's not true. Free stylist. It's like I appreciate the credit, but it's. Not fair, because you're doing more than you give yourself credit for. So I have I have worked with stylists before, and I have I also shop. Yeah, so, it's like fun. Zara, you know, it's, yeah. I think the t the first world problem that I have is that you post photos or you get photographed in it, and then you're like. Oh, am mm -hmm. I done with this? I'm changing that. We do a show every day because we film our podcast. It's like, so I got to get all my my clothes from like Forever 21. Because yeah. I can never wear it again. Yeah. Yeah. I'm over that though. I know. If Megan Markle's doing I'm it, so can we. I'm a big yeah. outfit repeater. Yeah. yeah. That is my claim to fame. I mean, I have five shirts. So like I have to be an outfit <laughs> yeah. repeater. Uh, I wear the same workout clothes to work I have every no single choice. morning. I, I literally no look like a pile of poop every How morning. do you wake up so early and do, oh um, like you've now been up for 24 hours, uh, not like 12, 12 hours. hours yeah i really honestly like i thrive in the morning like i'm at my peak tanya at like 6 a.m that is so so weird. it's weird because i like wake up and i like and i do my like my job and yeah. then like that's when i'm like my best yeah like right now is when i feel like i'm like hmm. it's so funny because we normally do our podcast at around like 11 okay. in the morning and i i come in and i'm like tired straight from like, bed yeah yeah <laughs> and tanya's like blah, 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 blah. She's oh got, like God. 15 coffees yeah She's, like on one and then we did a podcast from Vegas at the iHeart Festival and yeah. we did it late. It was like 9 I mean, p.m. Yeah, 9, not late, but it was like in the nighttime. And I was like, shining. So, <laughs> <laughs> I literally was like, how much longer? Are yeah. Our producer here? was like, maybe we do like one nighttime podcast every month just yeah. so Becca can Becca is like, <laughs> take the lead. Yeah. Um, I have one final question for you guys and it's a little uh, shady. I'm sorry. Because you guys went on a like a trip and you did a live podcast from, it was like a vineyard Hawaii? or something. No. Oh, no, you're talking about uh, Temptation Island? I don't know, but you did it with Jana Kramer. Oh, husband. that was just Tanya. And now oh, was that just, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, then I need to ask you because they were just in the news recently and their their names came across our desk for like them fighting on their podcast about him finding naked pictures or whatever. Like, what were they like in person? Were they fighting? Um, Were they fighting? Yeah, I think they yeah. were. Well, that was no, but that was just the, that was the episode where she said she walked down and started all talking. Remember? Oh, and she yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. you were part. <laughs> yes. Were part okay. Yeah, scandal. and that happened on our podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh god, yeah. Uh, she basically walked down. I was sitting at dinner, or like we were all kind of like just everybody just eats at this like place because there was a bunch of pod. We were all doing our show or whatever. And so we were sitting at a table, just the two of us talking, because I don't know, like you I, and the husband. Yes. Okay. And she walked in and saw us there, and like I guess it it triggered her, and she like brought it up on the podcast. I'm shook. I know, and we're she started talking. crying, and I felt really bad because I'm like, uh, I know that's hard. Like really? I'm also like the most yeah. harmless, <laughs> harmless, like 
harmless. Like yeah. you could put me in a room with like the hundred married men and I would not do a damn yeah. thing. Did you, you ever know? watch a show GCB? No. Good Christian Bitches? No. Oh, You're a GCB. No. Not a show. Such a good show. One it season was, on ABC. One season wonder. Oh, it's coming back. Yeah. Not in the Allegedly. same way. They, like someone got the rights again and they're going to do it again. But the original Kristen Chenoweth, Leslie Bibb, yeah. it is iconic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you were, just, yeah. you were reminding me because like we're nice Jewish girls and you're a GCB. Yeah. Thank you so good much. Good Christian Bitch. But I, th- I felt really bad for her because I'm like, clearly, That is sad. Yeah. Okay. I actually listened to that podcast on the way from the airport. Was it shocking? Like hearing your name being brought up on another podcast is the, well, for when us, it's like... Someone sends you that screenshot and they're like, 30 minutes 32 in, you're talking like, about oh, yeah, It's like yeah, the worst like, fucking feeling. Like my like, heart no, dropped. Yeah, like, like what the fuck did they say about me now? Is, <laughs> when yeah. you guys say my name on this podcast, I feel like I'm like hearing like the white house call my name or something well, that. Like, when, I'm like, like oh my when, God. I, when we know people listen to the show like we knew certain we know like certain influencers and celebrities listen like i'm always dropping their name just so, like they'll text me or something you know like, i'm just like craving attention i know that people will come up to me and be like did you know did you know that they said your name on the morning toast I'm right like, like yeah, you don't even have knew. to listen to the toast because the toaster will tell you yeah. so it's like yeah. if you guys ever bring up my name it's like a scrubbing in person will dm me like hey 18 minutes and 32 seconds you know? <laughs> Is there anything we didn't cover before we let you guys go? Because it's officially dark out. This episode yeah. has started oh, in the daytime, what time and then we saw the sunset, and now it's dark outside. It's like a time lapse. Episode. It's a time lapse. It's actually crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Is there anything else we need to talk about? To I go. think unfortunately, like we should let you go. But anything else? Where can people get the Macy's collab? Um, so it's in over 400 Macy's stores. Wow. I think you can find online which locations it's at or call your local Macy's. And the pieces um, and are also available online. online. What'd you say? The pieces are available yeah, online? Yeah, the whole collection's online. So um, okay. everyone can shop there. And when do you guys drop Scrubbing in episodes? Normally Mondays. Yeah. Every Monday. Mondays. But everybody can vote. Yes. Oh, yeah, vote. yeah. If you can't vote for us, vote yeah. for these, for these it ends, The voting ends on Friday. So and this will be up positive. tomorrow. 25 times a day, you can make a million different accounts. Yep. Scrubbing in. And do you guys like each get a plus one? Because like you could. Oh, yeah. We actually don't know if we're going. Yeah, we haven't gotten. Imagine. That, Imagine being <laughs> having the honor bestowed upon you and not even showing up. Imagine. You, like just super busy. With no, we we haven't gotten invited. No, we haven't gotten invited. Oh, oh yeah. Because last year you guys were there and they didn't announce it at the show. Did yeah. you think that, did you know they weren't going to? Did this you get any heads up? This is actually such a great story. So we go not expecting to be shown or I mean, they're presenting like Mila Kunis. You know, yeah. we're like, they're probably not going to do pop podcast right. but maybe they'll do it on a screen during a commercial, commercial break we thought like yeah maybe before on the red carpet you know we just thought somewhere they'd sneak it in so the whole time we're at the podcast table and before we sit down we go to the restroom and donia runs into a girl from e wait yeah what'd she say she told she goes do you have your speeches ready <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Oh my God. So during this time, there were a bunch of fires going on and it was like during the oh, Malibu yeah. fires. And so we are sitting at the table and we're like, should we bring up the fires in our right. speech? Like the we're not getting like, we're we're trying to decide what we should address. This. We literally, the whole, we're, we're nervous. We're Did like, you know you had one already? So we got an email because we got invited yeah. and it kind of, it alluded to the fact that we had won in that category, but uh-huh. it was nothing. It didn't feel like an official thing. Right. I, I didn't want to jump the gun. Anything. I so was like, I was mm-hmm. scared to even get excited. I was just yeah. like, yeah. we'll know for sure after the award yeah. show. The whole show goes by. Nothing. Still no confirmation. <laughs> no announcement. No speech needed. We were watching too. We're like, maybe there's a write-in candidate who won the morning yeah, toast. No. Wait, so they were, <laughs> we're getting into our Uber. Like it's over. Like yeah. we're getting into the Uber. Kelty calls me and she's like, congratulations. Oh, you guys she's won. So sweet. And we're like, what? So you this? found out from Kelty. Essentially, yeah. That is so funny. Oh my god, that is And hilarious. did you get a physical award? Yes. It's One or two? House. One. One, yeah, that's what we have to win it this year, so that Becca can. Yeah, have her it was supposed to be like on and off. That yeah, had you made the decision? On it, yeah. You haven't gotten it back yet. You're yeah. still off. Okay, we just got to get you another. It's a yeah. noble cause. Yeah. That is our campaign. That is our campaign. You could also listen to Tanya. Five, what, what? How many days a week you're on radio? Five days a week, Monday through Friday. Kiss FM. Kiss FM in the mornings. That is so cool. Thanks. Feel free to mention this experience tomorrow until yeah, and we're gonna that get tickets you, are available to my tour at girlwithanojob dot com. Yeah. And then we're San gonna Diego, get San Diego, San Francisco we're get this weekend. Your show, your comedy show, we're gonna get a special platform, yep. and then we're gonna get you on Dancing, Dancing with, with Stars. stars. Dancing yeah, with and honestly, you. we've just really now like started to understand like the whole concept of like ask, believe, receive. Like you can't get something if you never physically say it. So is there anything you guys want to say that like, you want? Oh, um, like you have a collab now with Macy's, so like you don't really need anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm just done. Yeah, like what about you? I have anything good? Anything you want to say? Just say it. Um. I am actually preparing myself for the man of my dreams. Oh my God, I love you so much. I'm preparing it for you too. I'm starting my 10 day journal tomorrow 
And then I have a seven week workshop that I start on Monday. Wow. Yeah, I'm like really like preparing. You're serious. Yeah. I'm happy. I, it's going to happen for you. I feel it. I do too. What happens at the workshop? I do it. It's it's like actually like Great a question. It's like a it's a it's a at home workshop. It's a book. It's called Calling in the One. Have you heard of it? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you don't have to go anywhere. That's I don't nice. Have to go anywhere, but I have to do it day by <laughs> I hate day. Going you places. have to do it like every single yeah. day. You do one thing, and it's like a it's a seven week program. Yeah, wow. I know. I've tried to end the podcast three times now, so let's try one more time. Thank you guys so much for being here. We absolutely love you. This was such a fun episode. Make sure to check out Scrubbing In. Follow Becca and Tanya on Instagram. Check out Becca's Club. You guys have so many things to push. I love it. Check out Tanya on the radio. All the things. Vote for them in the People's Choice Awards. If you can't be us, it should be them. And we will be back tomorrow, Thursday, with an episode with your favorite Morgan Stewart. So we will see you then. Bye. Bye.